Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how you can create this vortex gun, which will basically pull everything within a certain radius uh, into the center to be destroyed. Alright, so the first thing we're going to need to do is create a few blueprints. So we'll just right click here in the content browser and we'll go to blueprints here and we're going to create a blueprint interface. You can just call this vortex. Then we're going to right click and we'll create a couple blueprint classes. First one we're going to do is an actor and we will call this vortex generator. And then we'll right click again, create another blueprint class actor and we'll call this vortex debris. So if we open up our interface here, we're just going to call this function vortex and we'll give it a couple inputs and one output which we will just call success. The first input we want is a vortex center and we'll make this a vector and then we're going to want to get vortex reference and we'll make this of type vortex generator here object reference. So we can hit compile and save. That's all we need to do in the interface. And we can open up our vortex generator here. We'll just add a component, a sphere. And we'll give this a green color. And then we'll add another component sphere collision and we'll make sure this is as big as you guys want the effective radius to be so just make it something large like 30 by 30 and the final thing we'll add is a projectile movement and we'll just give this an initial speed of a thousand and we'll turn gravity off compile and save that. Then if we minimize, we go into our vortex debris here. I'm going to also add a sphere to this. And we will make this a red color. Then we can go to our event graph. And what we're going to want to do is create a custom node. We can call this Vortex Death. And we're going to want to go to the class settings here. And over here on the right side panel, interfaces, we're going to want to add our Vortex interface here. And we can double click on this. And right off of here, we're going to call our custom event the Vortex Death. And this we're going to need to give a couple inputs to. The first one will be the vortex center. And that will be a vector. And the second one will be a vortex reference. And we'll look for vortex generator object reference here. So we can compile that. And then we're just going to hook these two up like this in the interface. So we can compile and save that. And if we go into our vortex generator, go to the event graph, can delete all of this stuff here. And we just want to get this sphere collision. And we'll scroll down and do on component begin overlap. And we'll just check does implement interface and we'll look for our vortex interface here and then we'll have a branch node and if it does implement our interface we'll drag off of this actor and we will call our vortex message here and for the vortex reference we'll get a reference to self and for the center, we'll just drag out the default scene root. 
let's say get world location, and we'll feed that in to our interface here. And we can compile and save. Now we can go back to our vortex debris. And in here, we're going to do a bunch of math. So first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to drag out from the vortex reference and say get distance to. And we'll make this the other actor, and the target will be self. And then we're going to right click here on this value and promote it to a variable, and we'll call it radius. And we'll hook these two up like that. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to grab our sphere, and we'll say get world location. We're going to control C, control V, because we'll need two of these. The first one we're going to break, and the other one we'll leave as is. And then we're going to drag out of here and say find look at rotation, and we'll make this the target, and the start will be the vortex center here. And then we're going to break this so that we can get the um, Z yaw value. We're going to right click here and promote it to a variable, we'll call that angle. We'll hook this up like that. And the other thing we're going to need to save is the Z value of the world location here. So we'll right click, promote this to a variable, and we'll call this Z axis. We'll stick that in here. And then we're going to drag out, and we're going to make a timeline. And we can call this swirl. And we'll make this play from start. And if we double click on our timeline, we're going to want to add a float track to it. We can just call this, again, swirl. And we'll right click here and add a key float. At time 0, the value will be 0. It remembers. And then we'll right click again, add another key float. And this will be how long you want the objects to be swirling around the vortex before they are destroyed. So we'll just leave that at 5, and the value will be 1. And you can change this. You can right-click and add another key float, just to have it kind of take a little bit longer to swirl around. And then as it gets closer to the center, it'll speed up. And you can just put that anywhere. So we'll come back out to our event graph. And then we're going to drag out from our angle and hold Alt. And we're going to want to set our angle. So if we get another reference to the angle here, hold Control. And we're going to add float to a float and hook that up here. And the value that we're going to add here is going to determine how fast it's going to rotate around the vortex center. So we'll just put 10 degrees I found works pretty well. And then we're going to drag out and say set actor location. And now we're going to do a bunch of math to get this um, vector value here. So first thing we're going to do, we'll drag out of our vortex center, and we'll say break vector. And then we're going to grab our radius. We'll say get the radius. And we're going to lerp our radius value from whatever it started at, the distance to this actor from the vortex center, to 0. And we'll use this as the alpha. Then we can control C, control V on the lerp, because we're going to need another one. And the other one that we're going to lerp from is we're going to get the world location of the sphere, this Z value here. So we're going to take our Z axis, plug that into the A. And from this break vector, the Z here, we're going to plug that into the B. And again, we're going to take this and plug it into the alpha. Then we're going to take our angle. We can get that. And we're going to search for cosine in degrees. And then we're going to search for sine in degrees here. 
And we're going to take out of this lerp and look for multiply float. And then after that, we're going to search for add float. And we can copy these two, control C, control V. And we'll plug this in here. And then from the cosine, we're going to plug that into the bottom of this multiply. And the sine will plug into the bottom of this multiply. And what we're going to add that to, the sine is going to be added to the y. And the cosine will be added to the x. And then we're going to say make vector. So this will go into the x. This will be the y. And the z we're going to get from this lerp here. Lerp this into the z. And then we will plug this in as the new location. So if we hit compile and save, we can now go into our first person character and change the class that it's going to fire into our vortex generator. Compile and save. And then we'll get rid of all of this vortex debris here. And we'll add in a few of these that we just created. So control C, control V. And you can just throw in as many as you want just to get a good effect. And we'll have some over here. OK, and then we'll hit play. And we'll fire it. Ooh. Forgot to do one thing. We don't want that to start on overlap. So for our vortex generator, we'll go into there. We'll say begin play. And we're going to have a delay. We'll give it about 1.5 seconds. And actually, we'll get rid of this, this part. What we'll do is we'll check from our sphere here. We'll say get overlapping actors. And we'll search for our vortex debris. And we'll do for each loop. And this is what we will check if it implements the interface. So we'll give that a second and a half. The target. Oh, and this needs to go here. Compile and save. And after this, we will set our velocity of the projectile movement to 0. This way, it doesn't keep uh, moving forward. If we hit Compile and Save, now it should work as expected. And there you have it. Created a vortex, and it destroys all the actors. Well, I put that in there, would destroy them when they overlap. So that would be in the vortex debris um, or the vortex generator. You can put that in somewhere and just say destroy actor on overlap. But all right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.